So hi everyone, so welcome to Tel Aviv first of all and welcome to the panel of uh, creative solution to an Hi there, my name is Isabel. Uh, I lead business development at Replay. We are a, a video intelligence platform backed by Sequoia, who utilizes computer vision to tag uh, creatives at scale and help app, app developers understand what are the key drivers of success or detractors of performance of their creatives. In simple terms, we understand why video works and provide recommendations to improve creative performance. And in an iOS 14 plus world, we are like the MMP of video ads. Why? Because we tag different uh, events in the videos and we pair them with performance metrics. Over to Yael. Thank you. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Yael Altul. I'm a product manager at AppsFlare. For the ones who don't know, AppsFlare is a platform that helps marketeers understand where their users are coming from and also measure their campaign performance. Uh, the group that I'm part of is working on the fun stuff and this is about all the challenges around iOS privacy and soon also Google uh, privacy solution. Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yotam Dalon. I lead the growth at uh, Bigabit. Uh, Bigabit is a DSP mobile focused working in the programmatic world, uh, doing a lot of user acquisition and retargeting with many of you folks uh, a lot in the gaming space. Um, yeah. Hello guys, uh, I am Udit Verma, uh, co-founder and CMO of Tracker.com. Tracker is a one-stop solution for the attribution need. So you talk yeah. about web, you talk about app, we have that solution. Uh, so yeah, we, can, we, are, we are the like, one-stop solution for uh, the attribution. Cool, so thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Tomer, by the way. I'm uh, head of user acquisition for networks and DSPs with uh, huge games, uh, casual and uh, social casino uh, gaming developer. And welcome everyone. So uh, we'll get things started with some uh, general question about what's been going on lately with uh, our interesting ecosystem. Like you said, yeah, yourself, it's uh, very fun to say the least. Uh, so from your perspective, in this new era of privacy, what would you define as the most uh, uh, significant challenges for both advertisers, distributors, MMPs, etc.? What do you think? Yeah, I think that we can start with you. Thank you. Um, so I think first of all that we can uh, split campaign performance into different groups, right? We have re marketing and targeting, we have attribution, we have measurement. And talking about measurement and attributions, yes, it's, it's still challenging and we have some limitation, but both advertisers and ad networks can still doing it, right? Um, targeting on the other side is something that was severely hurt by iOS. And thinking about ad network, for example, the option to learn on a user that is not mine user is basically dead, right? And also the option to learn about my own user that I was attributed for is something that is super challenging because I have so many limitations in this new world. So this is why we see that, for example, campaign cost was severely uh, increased and also um, the entry barrier for new players now is much higher. And also for old players, I think it's super challenging to keep growing your business that way. Mm -hmm. uh, from, a, from a DSP perspective, um, you know, targeting is one thing, obviously retargeting became a very, very big challenge that is a very profitable activity for many of the gaming companies and e-commerce and, and everyone around and it was just growing until iOS came. <laughs> So now we're trying to be a little bit more uh, creative around that, um, also with attribution. Uh, but you know, companies like AppsFlyer create a lot of interesting solutions that can help us overcome this. In my opinion, it's a bit more philosophical, but I think that you know the vagueness uh, of how Apple delivered this news to the world, I think, was the biggest challenge. Um, you know, changes happen in this industry, and if they would just say these are the new rules, and you know, prepare for it, but all the stalling that they did and the additional information they give us in pieces every time kind of created a lot of drama that wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, we yeah, didn't need uh, that. So <laughs> I feel like, so 
industry these days, you know, uh, hell went of, you know, phasing out the uh, third party cookies. You know, uh, so I, I feel like uh, these guys are, like, it, 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 it is, like, very challenging to, you know, to mine the data of your own. And it is very, like, challenging to, you know, to, like, track, you know, uh, to, to track the user data, like, which you can, like, from, from that, like, you can optimize the campaign. Like, for example, uh, Apple is also, like, you know, uh, coming up with the mail protection policy, like, where they will, you know, uh, uh, they, they are not allowing the, any, any invisible pixel to be uh, attached on the email so that you cannot, like, you know, track any open rates. So this is how the thing is, like, you know, working. And, like, I feel like there would be, like, there would be a time, like, when we face, like, you know, 50% uh, of our data will, will not be relevant, will be irre irrelevant. And I, I feel like we have to focus on, like, 50%, uh, like uh, rest of the data, 50%. Which which we can utilize and which we can like, like you can, uh, which we can utilize and uh, get some optimization. Fifty percent is pretty optimistic from what yeah. I think, but again, we'll discuss Everything more. Everything is on like prob prob uh, probabilistic. <laughs> yeah, but from the creative perspective, what do you think, Isabel? How did you feel the impact, and what are your current solutions, for example, for uh, creative analysis and insights about how you can, again, continue promoting uh, uh, advertisers? campaigns and uh, apps in the best way possible? This is like the light at the end of the tunnel kind of question, isn't it? Don't worry, guys. There's hope. There's hope. So uh, I would say that the biggest challenge has been definitely data loss, right? Uh, advertisers today have less post-install data to optimize against. So we see that, you know, the ones that can better utilize the upper funnel can gain a, a competitive advantage over, you know, their competition. Um, also, like, we see that um, there's a lot of emphasis in creative, so different advertisers are leveraging their different uh, creative approaches to target different audiences. And you see that also like a lot of the platforms like Facebook and Google becoming, while they become more opaque and automated, uh, it means that advertisers have to test a lot more creatives to then, uh, so that the platforms can then pair them with the relevant segments. The problem here is there's so much emphasis in creatives, but no one really knows why certain creatives work and others don't or at least not at scale. You can maybe test some elements, but doing this at scale is just not possible. Here's the solution, huh? Do you want to hear it? Uh, yeah. Let's see <laughs> the solution, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. So we tackle it with computer vision AI, right? So we tag, uh, we use computer vision to tag all of the creatives of our customers, and then we pair them with performance metrics and can tell them exactly what works where and why, empowering them to produce better creatives at scale. Right? So utilizing creatives to target your audience better because, let's face it, this is all app marketers can control today, the content they put in front of their audience. So if they know what to be building in the different platforms to maximize performance, maybe they can improve their targeting that way. So it's to understand the con contextual, contextual connection, basically. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think it kind of relates to what we heard in the last panel. Um, so uh, with the latest uh, WWDC uh, announcements uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think that Isabel, you are, you'll be very pleased with the amount of data that you'll, that you'll be able to receive, right? How do you see it helping you? Yes, so, uh, you know, th there's good news for everyone, right? There will be, with Scan 4.0, there's more data signals that will be shared, and also they're trying to simplify the entire system, so I think that's good news for everyone. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not so positive? Come yeah. on. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Scan 4. 4.0 is, it's not a game changer, but it's basically an incremental evolution of Apple solution, right? So now advertisers will have more capabilities. Uh, they will be able to have longer LTV window, um, more uh, campaign breakdown, more postbacks. Uh, but I still think that we have here uh, the loss of user uh, level at scale, right? As, yes, we have the consented users, but they are just 20%. Yeah, for Google, we will have uh, a deprecation of the uh, Google uh, advertising ID. So the future is also relying on aggregate data, right? Aggregate data, model data for the partial part, and also be able to utilize everything into one reality. Very pessimistic, but uh, let's see, maybe, uh, uh, yeah, did from your feel. side. You know, so uh, like what WWDC like uh, they like uh, they made like four uh, four announcements. Like one is for uh, you know instead of like sending two bit data, like they will be, uh, sending the four bit data, and like uh, and uh, apart from that, like 
the uh, campaign ID has been, you know, uh, replaced by the identifier. It's, a, it's just a changing of the name. You know, or, and even like, so I, I feel, and there would be, you know, uh, the data, like, uh, there were, you can, you can even send, like, much more data than the, like, previous time. But you have to, like, maintain the anonymity of the data. Like, if you have, like, low anonymity, then you, then, uh, then there would be the chance and they will, like, send you the less data. When, if you, if you, like, have the high anonymity, if you have the high privacy data, if you are maintaining high privacy data, then yeah, definitely you can send much more uh, data. Like, I, I feel like it's it's like a same. You know, we are like tracking tool. Like we we are like we are an attribution tool, and we like we need some sort of you know value. Like uh, so in performance marketing, we do it, it with like click ID, and uh, in uh, app attribution, we did like for the IDFA and GID, and now we are doing it with the campaign ID. That's how like we are like you know. Uh, just shifting the you know the tracking from click ID to the campaign ID. That's it. From your side, from the DSP side, really, how do you see it working with a variety of advertisers? So I'll, I'll come a little bit more optimistic, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, so I think that you know we became blind almost instantly, right, when it came, um, and now slowly Apple is introducing more ways for us uh, DSPs that are focused on performance and high lifetime value, more conversion with the multiple conversion to learn more about the actual value and the users that we bring. So I think it's improving and we will see it step by step as we've seen so far. Uh, so we're staying optimistic. On the other hand, we're obviously improving the contextual uh, based targeting because you know, it just became the reality and you, know, you need a hard technology. We invest a lot in it. Um, so I think it will be okay. And, and, and I do think that once Google get into the game, um, you know, because they are way more experienced in advertising in general, I think that they will teach Apple some things of how to bring it to the game, and maybe we'll see some copies between them too, which will help all of us. I, I feel like Google will, you know, have some, some kind of relaxation because much more revenue that uh, like Google generate by, by the adverts. It, it's, it will not like that, like, uh, like Apple SKI network. It will be like more relaxing, and you, you will be tracking like much more like data, data points. Again, we're very optimistic. There's uh, a bit more time till the uh, sandbox arrives, but at least something that is a bit more positive is that uh, Google are listening to app vendors, to MMPs, to, to publishers, etc. cetera. Um, but that's nice. But we talked about targeting. We talked about campaign management. What about attribution? OK, attribution has become an issue with uh, not all users due to different uh, 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 capabilities are, that are now not available. What do you think that advertisers should look at now? You have uh, probabilistic, you have scan, you have incrementality. Uh, um, how do you see everything combined together? What would be the solution that you think that will be the, the next step? Is it a hybrid or one solution? What do you think? Yeah, uh, I can take it. Um, so yeah, so basically iOS 14.5, as you said, and also soon Google uh, created a new challenge in the ecosystem, right? Uh, basically, marketeers' life moved from a unified reality, like you said, to one that is siloed across different data attributions. We have Apple Search Ed, Scan, it will not be Scan, it will be Google Privacy Sandbox, right? The deterministic and so on. And one big challenge here is that how can advertiser combine all of those different realities into one reality where a user is being represented only once, right? And you have one number per metric, and there is no duplication between that, right? Looking at two different dashboards with two different numbers, how can I unify them into one reality? So uh, lately, AppsFlyer released uh, a new solution after talking with a variety of you know, region, clients from region, different regions, tier, verticals. Everyone had the same problem. So we released the single source of truth solution. And basically, this solution uh, take users and deduplicate them across all attribution sources. So you have one user uh, in one unified view. And then you can really understand simply metrics that were so obvious before, pre-iOS 14, like eCPI, total uh, installs, total revenue. Um, and the results so far are amazing. Uh, we saw. Uh, decreased in the CPI for our clients, organic, super helpful metric. Finally, advertisers can really understand what is their organic baseline, right? Uh, total attribution uh, um, got increased, which is also super helpful for the N networks, right? 
so I really think that the future is being able to combine all of those reality into one reality, one number, and then you can really grow your business. Tom, from your side, I mean, you look from the advertiser's perspective, of course, Yalu as well, but how do you see people? I mean, are they going still with probabilistic? Are they trying scan? Are they trying different measurements? How do you see it from your side? Yeah, I mean, so we see, obviously, as a DSP, we're also dependent on which MMP the, the advertiser is using, right? We only represent you in buying um, the users, but we are dependent. So when Apps Flyer release something like this, you know, and the competitors don't have it, um, there is some kind of a, of a learning phase, even for us, right? We're waiting for the demo, by the way, of this, uh, of this new thing. Um, no worries. <laughs> and, um, you, you know, we're still all learning. So for your question, if there's a single truth, I think that what this thing did to the market is that everybody is testing more and learning more and diving deeper into the solutions and the partners they're working with. Um, so there's no perfect answer yet. Uh, and I think such solution will help us know. Um, and it also relates, you know, if it's UI or retargeting and also the trust that we have, you know, we work with you for a few years. So uh, yeah. there's a lot of trust and it helps, right? Because there is more openness for testing new things and listening and creative testing. So I think we maybe we'll know the, the, the one great answer in a few months. We did. And I feel, you know, the, the only source of truth is the God. You know, you can't, you can't, uh, like, you know, uh, n n n uh, probabilistic MMM, they are like, they are like just pro like, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving you the data, which is not that much, you know, truthful. But yeah, but like, if I choose from MMM and probabilistic, I'll go with probabilistic because uh, they are like matching the data much more. Because uh, in MMM, uh, it's a bottom up, you know, uh, tracking. So MMM uh, ignores certain value, which has been like sent by the SK ad networks. So that's why I am, I'm like, I'm pretty much sure with the, you know, probabilistic between them, between these two. But what about incrementality, for example? How do you see it coming? I mean, yes, you have less data, but eventually you can do tests in order to measure, okay, what eventually drives the needle? What moves the, the, the revenue, the users? Because you know there is, with less, inf with less data, you have cannibalism, right? So how do you see it from your side? I mean, do you see only incrementality as something that can help us, or the mixture of uh, MMM yeah. and probabilistic and scan? maybe building something all together like yeah like you said uh, so the tool to the answer tool. that we have to like understand the process of like you know integrating the sk ad network so when you like integrate the sk ad network you have to integrate with the performance uh, the, uh whichever the like software which is sending the post back then the and you have to integrate the mmp tool as well like where the uh, the advertising you are advertising the you know which is the advertised app so the data has been sent from the SK ad network to the ad network, uh, the postback system, then the postback system to the MMP. So I feel like being a solution, like being a like one-stop solution, like uh, so I can feel like I feel like uh, I can collect much more data than the MMPs because yeah, because we uh, we are working as a we are working with the postbacks. So I can get, gather much more IP data, I can gather much more device data, I can gather much more, you know, country geo data level, anyone with some, so we are, we are thinking of, you know, making uh, like certain, you know, uh, values where we can gather the uh, data of the batteries, like, you know, the battery of the device, device battery, where like we can, you know, uh, identify whether this is like a click form or not. That's an interesting topic of itself about less data, more fraudulent activity that is uh, uh, more likely to happen. Everything, but that, everything comes up with the, like, you know, uh, comes to the fraudulent activities because of these, like we are into this, you know, privacy and policies. Right. Isabel, from your side, I mean, in the past, before uh, iOS 14.5, Data, uh, creative was king, right? Everyone was doing creative because the more the system became automated, so okay, we try to understand how can we, we be more efficient with creatives, right? Yeah. With less data, I understand that you're doing all of these insights, analysis about which elements in the creative, but how eventually do you know which creatives brings the value? How do you work with your advertisers to really understand that? So we're trying to change the file-based approach to a video ad to a tag-based approach. So a video is not that video, it's a combination of tags. By analyzing that at scale and pairing that with upper funnel metrics, like a lot of people are looking again, you know, like it was before, like IPM, CPI, CTR. By pairing those 
tags with those performance metrics, they can see actually what's moving the needle in each network, in each OS. So they're investing a lot more time in understanding the why, because that's all they can control. One thing that we have in the roadmap that I think is quite exciting is then moving this to market insights. So everyone is spying on their competitors, right? Everyone does that. But you know, you say, well, this competitor is having a great share of voice, whatever, in this video, but why? So trying to apply the AI or computer vision to competitive intelligence, really trying to understand not only what elements of your videos best resonate with your audience, but also what are the key drivers of success of your competition. This fosters ideation and helps advertisers better track their audience via the creative strategy, if that makes any sense. So understand which creative draws which audience and which audience give the best value. That exactly. summarizes like? Yeah, right. you hired. I can work in replay, yeah, okay. Um, so I think that something that uh, we touched a bit is about sandbox. I mean, we spoke about iOS 14, 14, 14.5, 14 15, and soon to be 16 for the last couple of years now. Every time Apple uh, 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 says, okay, now for privacy, everyone are shaking. Uh, we're trying to understand, okay, how will, ch how will it change our ecosystem and how can we adapt to it? But what do you think about sandbox? I mean, we're just starting hearing a little bit here, a little bit there. What do you see sandbox impacting? Because, for example, we'll start with the creative this time. A lot of advertisers are using their learnings from Android about the creatives. They understand, OK, which drives the best performance, both uh, in upper funnel and down a funnel. Now it will also be, again, we don't know, but something most likely similar. How do you see it impacting all of the tests uh, and ideation and uh, analysis that uh, you've mentioned? I think we need to calm down a little bit because this will take some time, okay? And from what I've seen, again, Yael can just crucify me after this because she might disagree with me, she's the expert, but from what I've seen, Google has been a lot more conservative and collaborative. And, you know, the sandbox solution is still yet a bit unclear, but it seems that it's going to be more advertiser friendly. Okay, so we'll continue to move to a privacy-centric advertising space. And in my view, from what I see, there'll be more emphasis on upper funnel, on contextual advertising and creatives. If you can implement a data-driven creative strategy, you will gain um, competitive advantage, no matter what happens with GA deprecation. So you're calm. You're the calmest calm. out, out of everyone here. I'm calm and collected. You're safe, yeah? <laughs> I totally agree with you, by the way, about Google approach. Basically, first of all, for apps with uh, a lot of uh, direct click-through, there is no an issue because uh, as far as we know, Google uh, did not announce about the deprecation of Google referral, right? So for apps with a large portion of uh, direct click-through, there is no problem. Um, and for the rest, basically campaign measurement capabilities is still there. And yes, SCAN, uh, Apple solution and Google solution for privacy might look similar, like you said. Yes, they are both talking about um, user identifier uh, deprecation and data sharing with third party. But basically, they are nothing alike. They are, they are not comparable at all. And Google solution is a much better solution because they are working together with the industry. And we have a gradual two years release and we can work together in order you know, to work on, a, on the best solution for the industry together. And also, you can see in their documentation that was released, by the way, in compared to uh, SCAN, that we are talking about near real-time uh, data compared to SCAN, where you are getting the signals after only uh, two days, sometimes even three days. We are talking about campaign breakdown, which is amazing. We are talking about high uh, reporting capabilities. And one another important thing is that Google uh, does not take the attribution authority into their own hands, right? Scan is taking, uh, Apple is taking using Scan the attribution authority, and here is not the case. So I'm also very optimistic about uh, Google Privacy Sandbox. I converted her, she's an optimist now. <laughs> you Ooh. see? Do, when do talking th about Google. Say, do you think that maybe, I mean, Apple started as the most strict side. Google are now learning the market, listening to uh, publishers, advertisers, etc. Do you think that eventually they'll meet somewhere in the middle? Because we see that now Scan 4.0 is starting to be a bit more lenient, still strict, but a bit more lenient. Maybe uh, two years from now it will be somewhere in the middle because both competitors will want to be more attractive, okay? We see uh, marketing budgets shift with every uh, announcement, with, with every decision. Uh, uh, Udit, what do you think? Uh, I'm completely agreed with, you know, uh, with Yael. So 
whatever she mentioned, she mentioned, you know, uh, like appropriately. So uh, as I said, like Google will not, you know, will leverage the, some, some kind of, you know, flexibility in terms of running the ad campaigns. So they will like, uh, so they, they have come with, you know, uh, so as far as I was like learning one article, uh, they have come with like two solutions as far as I know. Like they have come like come came up with you know multiple solution, but I know like two. So I, I read I read one article where they mentioned they are they are like having a flash solution, where they you can you know you can you can list the users and uh, and there is there was another solution which is topic solution, where you can you know target the audience on the basis of topic on their on the basis of their interest. So contextual will be something. We'll go a few years back and uh, uh, less granular and more uh, uh, aggregated, like you said, Yale. Yotam, what do you think? How do you see it from the advertiser's perspective? Uh, I mean, first of all, I agree that drama will never help us, right? So we all need to stay calm. And when we, while we do that, we need to be open to testing and do a lot of testing as much as possible and, and as much they allow us, right? So the sandbox is a good tool for that. I think that you know people at the end of the day will keep buying phones, keep using their phones, right? So the audiences will stay there. We just need to figure out how to get to them, and contextual seems like the probably the you know half of the way at least, um, and we need to figure out the whole attribution um, and targeting uh, to a more accurate. Yeah, time. I think time will tell. No need for for panic. I mean, we'll we'll adjust, we'll adapt. The ecosystem will continue to grow and adapt to the situation to each and every announcement. Uh, this is a very interesting interesting topic and a wide topic. Uh, I think that we can now we have like a five more minutes left. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you have some questions about the things that we've just discussed. So anybody want to raise a hand, ask a question? The brave first person. Who's it going to be? Oh, stand up. Who are you? We're so excited. Hi, my name is Adal. Uh, I'm founder of Top T. Uh, Top T is an app that allows content creators and uh, artists, musicians to turn their video is into NFTs. And what I want to ask you is about A-B testing. Uh, in the past few years before uh, iOS 14, it was very easy to test uh, different splits, landing page or verticals and see what's convert best, but now it's way more complicated. And I'm, I found myself very struggling to realize how I'm going to start the A-B test. Uh, let's say I wanted to test the uh, landing page, creatives and audience. and Inside each uh, vertical, you have like uh, the landing page headlines and text and call to actions, and so like <laughs> from my like my approach is saying that marketing is is a formula. You need to uh, like to to fit the right audience, the right uh, headline, to the right landing page, and when you try to test, like you can you can start from any direction. You can test like uh, five different headlines and five different landing pages, but the, it it doesn't mean that this headline is the best. It just means that, that this headline with this landing page is the best. So how you can really, like, how you not going to, like, uh, go lost in the data and, like, how to really do A-B testing smarter? Thank you. A-B testing, who wants it? I'll keep this. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, so we see that advertisers now, it's, it's quite hard to A-B test all of those components. They can't do it at the same time, right? So in our case, they leverage AI to analyze all of the creatives that you're using with all of those different components to understand exactly what components, what pairings go well together. So when you then A-B test one component, is a lot, the process becomes a lot more simpler. But then how you do it, maybe uh, you can take this one, but you know, you need to separate it from the campaigns that are already running. Maybe even if those creators are fatiguing, you have to separate them. Otherwise, the network will throw more spend into that. But maybe you can yeah. elaborate on that one. Separating um, is exactly uh, the point, you know, and you need some patience, obviously. Um, you know, as a smaller app, as you mentioned, um, you know, budgets are more limited, but you still need to find the right way for you. Um, so, you know, the settings of how to A-B test are changing because it's less accurate. Um, so we need to learn how to do this A-B testing. You know, for example, with creatives, where you get less information now from scan on what's working, you know, you can try and separate the campaign level according to creatives and then learn what's working. Or you can look, um, for example, at Bigabit, we have this uh, model called deep categories that looks 
at the publishers. You see it a lot with different taxonomies now and separate them, which will narrow down the audiences without really knowing who they are. But by doing that, you will lower the CPI and increase the LTV potentially because they have more affinity to your uh, application. Next question, who Please wants to? Yeah, All good with the comment. answer? Go on. It's a complicated topic, yeah? I mean, it's, uh, maybe, there's maybe, no maybe. one answer. We, we, we don't have, you know, answer for that because of the delayed data. That's why, that's why uh, you, do, you cannot, you know, optimize at the real time. But I feel like, uh, just, uh, you know, just a thought. I feel you can use the pre-landers, maybe. Pre-landers might help you, like, but not 100%. You can just uh, uh, like you know uh, if if advertiser allows you, you can use the pre-landers maybe. Thank you, Udit. I just want to point out, Udit, if you India and Israel got together, we would control 20% of the world. So keep that in mind. So, like I, I am from I am from India. My heart is like Israeli. <laughs> okay, we're gonna buy you some socks while you're in the Holy Land. Okay. <laughs> it, it is like I don't under, I don't wear socks. <laughs> we love you. Any we're, more questions, guys? Who's got a question? Oh, come on. Rudy just bared his socks, his ankles. Bro, guys, please <laughs> ask. <laughs> Otherwise, he's like buying me the socks. <laughs> Look, you're in trouble. You're not going to like this. You are giving me the socks, man. So if no more questions, thank you, everyone. Thank you for the panelists, and thank you for joining us, and have a great day.